Hello, I'm Danny DeLillo. And I'm Nori Victoria. Welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. We're here at the Cambridge Los Angeles show with Devin Thomas. Hi, yes. Everyone. With her movie? Chiroy by the Sea. That's right. Let's take a look at the clip. Every time, every minute. You are my sunshine Every time you are my sunshine I'm so new down I'm so low down Yeah, I'm not going to take a day I'm so new down I'm so new down Um Thank you so much for being here. And, yeah. And, and yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. It's such oh. a great experience. Well, we loved your film, didn't we, Nori? We absolutely adored it. <sighs> thank you. For those, that, for those that haven't seen it, tell us a, a brief synopsis of your film. Uh, so my film is about this Senegalese rapper, but it's really not about rap music. It's about using music as a means. She's a woman, that's the key part, right? Mm -hmm. um, about her struggle as a woman and who doesn't gender conform as um, like a very feminine woman and she lives in a very Muslim community, is into rap uh, and so rap music sort of becomes her way of being herself uh, despite all of the pressures of tradition and religion, gossip, there's lots of gossip about her being queer mm. which is illegal in Senegal so there's like dangerous repercussions to that um, and also she supports her whole family, she's just kind of a badass. <laughs> and wow. inspires me, yeah. Yeah. So the movie's about her and the struggle of being a woman and trying to find your voice um, in, uh, in urban Africa right now. Speaking of inspiration, what was your inspiration for this film? I know it has a very interesting backstory. <laughs> uh, if you can talk a little bit yeah. about that, that would be great. Well, I mean, I kind of met her by accident. I was <laughs> in Senegal, I go frequently uh, and I was shooting this film about Baba Mall, who's a Senegalese musician, mm -hmm. for uh, my professor, who's a filmmaker. And Baba Mall ended up not signing off on it, so I'm just sitting on all this footage that we can never use. Mm -hmm. uh, in, and, Senegal. In, Senegal. in Senegal. In Senegal, yeah. And so I ended up meeting her. I was shooting this big rap concert at this venue that North Korea built. As you do, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? <laughs> it's like the gaudiest thing I've ever seen. Just like fake marble everywhere. Wow. Uh, and I came on time because I'm American, <laughs> which meant I was four hours early. <laughs> and so well, you're in New York, yeah, yeah. In New York right now. <laughs> like, so yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah, my friend was like, "Meet me there now." She showed up three hours later. I was like, okay. <laughs> uh, he had to go change. That was the important part. But uh, so I now is a different time zone. Indeed. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so I was waiting outside, just interviewing people to kill time, and I met this woman, Sister Elby. She was one of the only women there. The rap scene is very uh, masculine. It's like mm. almost all men. Um, and she was outside and I could just like, I started talking to her and I was like, you're the coolest person yeah. I've ever met. And she ended up freestyling for me. And wow. I was like, she was, the guy she was with were freestyling too, but she was way better. Yeah. And so we ended up exchanging information and staying in contact. And I came back uh, and she agreed to make a film together. So I came back five months later and we shot, we only had one month to shoot everything. So wow. we shot for one month almost every day, which is tiring for everyone, especially yeah. a documentary subject. Yeah. Sure. I think people sign up to do a documentary without having any idea what, <laughs> like what happening. it's actually gonna be like. What, what I mean is actually, I, I mean, first of all, I'd love to know your sort of, your love for Senegal. I've got friends from yeah. London from Senegal and you've been there a few times mm -hmm. as well. And then, once obviously you're there like you know trying to tell your as we call in the documentary world your subject how, about you want to make a movie about them how did those two things kind of come together for senegal and with uh, her becoming your story yeah so i did study abroad in senegal in 2010 and mm -hmm. lived there for eight months mm -hmm. and i speak french fluently and i ended up learning wolof and uh -huh. living there i'm not fluent nice. in wolof but like functional in it mm -hmm. uh, which gave me a lot of access uh and i just fell in love with the culture and the place mm -hmm. and the food mm -hmm. and people um, love me aren't they 
they were yeah. awesome and yeah. the food is amazing mm -hmm. and the clothes it was just like I don't know I love Dakar if you have a chance is one of the coolest cities and the nightclub scene is amazing we're going yeah. we have to go yep. so I was going to ask you I know trust is a big thing when mm -hmm. you're making a documentary because you're you're giving yourself a window into people's lives, but you said you spoke, you learned their language. Would you say that was I the gateway that for was you? That was absolutely the gateway. Mm. I think if I didn't access. speak Wolof at all, there'd be no way. Uh, I also have a lot of friends who are Senegalese, so I had people who could vouch for me. Mm -hmm. And while I was there, I tried to hire, I had a Senegalese fixer who worked with us. Mm -hmm. uh, like my DP is American, but while there, I tried to use as much of a Senegalese crew as I could, mm -hmm. um, and, and also obviously pay them because <laughs> that's important. Uh, yeah, so also part of the way I could build trust, because it's difficult. I'm a white woman coming in to Africa telling a black woman's story, and there's lots of history of that mm -hmm. being terribly misrepresented. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted it to be somewhat of an exchange, and I approached it as that we're both female artists at the beginnings of our career, and mm -hmm. maybe we could help each other. Mm -hmm. So we shot the music video that's in the film. I shot that while we were there. Wow. Nice. And so we gave it to her and her rap partner as a gift um, to help them promote themselves. And also when we filmed the baptism scene, that was her family's baptism. So we wow. also edited a, like a family, it's like a wedding video, but a wow. baptism video for them and gave them that as like a token of gratitude for like welcoming us into their life and yeah, it meant a lot to me to be able to give something back, even if it wasn't monetary. So that's amazing, that mm. common ground that you had to find yeah, in, no, in the beginning. It, yeah. it, it is, and it is, it, you say trust is such a it's, it's such an important thing in the, in the documentary, you know, oh, filmmaking yeah. world. You know, what I loved and, and what was nice even last night is I got a lot of reaction from the audience that were just yeah. fell in completely in love with her, like discovered Senegal for the first time yeah. through, through your film, like bringing it all the way across back to LA. Like, what was it like to kind of like, you know, show an audience here like this amazing world and this amazing human that is, you know, who's extremely talented as well? You know, it was really great that the audience was so positively receptive to it. I mean, I've screened this multiple times, so every time I get so nervous. <laughs> um, you shouldn't be, but yeah, yeah, I understand. It's like, normally it's screened in New York, but this is its first time on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. And so it was just great. The audience really liked it. People were talking to me about it. And I just, a lot of my inspiration came directly from Senegalese cinema. So there are some scenes that I try to echo from my, one of my favorite movies called Tuki Buki. Um, and so, like, I hope that also this film introduces people to Senegalese film mm -hmm. and culture. Because, mm -hmm. and everyone should go to Dakar because it's fabulous. Yeah, well, we just have yeah. at the nightclubs. <laughs> we're going to go and have a good time. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know for, for you, Nori, but it's like, it's, it's you know, if, if somebody was creating something on you personally, not as, a, not as an actor or an actress, that's quite a vulnerable thing to experience, yes, isn't it? Like, it's, you know? It's, you, you have to be emotionally um, willing to, to be naked in front of people you, you don't know before, let them into your household, your, your problems, your ups and downs and highs and lows. And I know um, you probably it's hard not to get personally attached mm -hmm. to the stories of, of those that you're telling, but did you find more areas of common ground as you went along? I know you started off as, we're both women, creatives, what are other things did you find that you could relate to and yeah, you know, I'm attached to? I would say <laughs> I'm also a tomboy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm not like very much of a girl's girl. I don't really love wearing makeup or wearing dresses, and so, I don't know, we kind of both identified through that, um, mm. because she's also a tomboy and has been made fun of it for her mm. whole life, and I was like, I know how that feels. Mm. Wow. Uh, and I thought that that was another way in which like we really related. Um, and I don't know, she was just so generous. She let us come and film with her family, like mm. the first day, uh, and she was just so open, and I don't know, it's. Oh, it's really scary to be a documentary filmmaker because mm. you kind of have someone's life on your hands. Yeah. Uh, and I, I wanted to represent her and like how I, how I saw her, which was just this powerful woman and like, yeah, she's struggling and yeah, she has all these difficulties, but she always holds her head up high and she has so much self-respect, which I'm like, I need to work on that as well. Like, mm -hmm. I want this confidence and 
Don't yeah. we all? Yeah, really, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, it's really. a good lesson. Yeah. I would say you succeeded in that. Oh, wow. Well, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Have you gotten her feedback on uh, it? You know, she is very picky, and I've sent her the film, and she, <laughs> she hasn't said anything back, which I think is a compliment, because if yeah. she needed it, she would definitely tell me. <laughs> and she's not much at giving compliments, so I think the silence is a yes. Science, yeah. science is golden, yeah. right? Science yeah. is good news. I know that she really liked the music video, so that's good. Yeah. Nice. How, I mean, you know, how, how important is it to sort of, you know, for us here in the United States to be able to sort of showcase, um, you know, different worlds and different perspectives? Is that something that you as a documentary filmmaker is important? Of course, you've got a personal touch to Senegal, but it is so great because we really do need to know and experience what is happening in the world and these great people from all over the world from different perspectives. Is that something that you enjoy? Yeah, and I think it's really important right now with all this rhetoric, this anti-immigration rhetoric, Mm -hmm. um, that people, foreigners, are somehow dangerous or evil Mm -hmm. or just going to steal our resources. Like To me, that's never been my experience when I've been traveling. Mm -hmm. And when I was in Senegal, I was very welcomed and I would like, I wish that we could have that kind of culture here in America. Mm -hmm. And if I can help by showing people people lives in Africa specifically which has such a long history of being right this dark continent that is backwards or whatever and we can just say you know it kind of becomes the foil to how great Europe or America is you mm-hmm. need this negative to balance it by mm. I hate that mm. uh, and so I wanted to showcase uh, Senegal as this like beautiful vibrant community that it is filled mm-hmm. with like strong compassionate people mm-hmm. right. but they're definitely not people to be afraid of we were just talking about empathy, mm. like that's key in, in a com- component in becoming aware of each other's stories and mm. being able to see things from another person's perspective, getting rid of the rhetoric, getting mm. rid of anti whatever we have going on and you are a key, oh, key component you. to that and we're just really grateful. Yeah, for, yeah. for filmmakers and voices like yours oh, thank you. to do that. I just think that at the end of the day, we're all human beings and we all mm. have stories to tell. We do. So, we yeah, do. I hope to tell these stories that otherwise wouldn't get a voice, you know? Yeah. Mm. And I just, well, I wish one thing is that there were more African women in film mm-hmm. and that there just isn't training or the financing for that over there. Mm-hmm. No, and I think I think that's just, you know, something to you know, that we are, you know, hopefully can break forward in those in those areas and break Absolutely. down those boundaries. And um, and it's, you know, it's it's so powerful because, you know, this, you know, does, you know, does fall in, you know, Black History Month as well, which was yeah. a, a great celebrational program we had. Um, but, you know, it's great it's films. we celebrate films from Africa all throughout the year. But how, you know, what does it feel like to, you know, work on the other side of the world, bring your film to, to LA, have it in front of an audience here at New Filmmakers LA. What was that feeling like? I mean, it kind of felt great. <laughs> it should, yeah. right? Oh, good. Yeah, it felt great. Um, you know, it's nice to have an audience for your film. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right, not Otherwise, on the laptop. <laughs> what's the point? Yeah. yeah, I've spent hours watching it over and over again on my laptop, but when you see it on the big screen, especially with an audience, it's such a different relationship to it. It's no longer just mine. Now it can go out into the world, people can see it, and they can make what they want from it, you know? Mm. And I think that's an important part of filmmaking, is yeah. that you have to let go of your child, kind of, yeah. <laughs> and let it out in the Absolutely. world. Absolutely. Which is scary, but also very rewarding. Yeah, well, I love that you brought us together out of, you know, it ended up being your story, um, which was amazing. We should just go to Senegal and go back when they, when, when yeah. she goes in for yeah, round two. Yeah, so come with yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I gotta go soon. Hopefully this year, like, but I want to wait for the dry season. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So and what, what's next for you? Uh, well, I'm trying to finish my PhD. We'll see if that happens. And then <laughs> I'm working on this new film project that's very in the pre-production stages. But hopefully I have a meeting with the subjects. And if it all goes well, then we'll start filming immediately. But uh, it's about this uh, radical theater group up in Harlem who are Black Panthers. Mm-hmm. And we just found, my friend's a film historian, and we just found like the only existing copy of their film from 1968 that had wow. been lost to them. So we're getting it digitized, and um, we're tr- it's the 50-year anniversary of this film. A lot of these actors are they're really old now, they're 80. Wow. Um, and I just I want to tell this, like an oral history about this like radical theater 
uh, this black movement. Right now we're having really, it's not even a renaissance of black film. It's like finally black actors and black filmmakers are getting a chance to have big blockbuster films, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. And I see that this is like the heritage of which that I grew out of. Mm. It's such an important story to tell. I have to wow. ask you, Yeah. where does your interest come from in, in black women, black, the black Gosh. Uh, diaspora? Uh, our stories. I mean, it probably comes back because my best friend growing up was black. We grew up together. We've known each other. We were neighbors, so we, she's basically my sister. And I don't know, through that, I, you know, I didn't know what race was until I was taught about it mm. later. I was just like, why does she have cooler hair than I do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then it's strange. It's like you grow up, you learn. Basically, we learn racism. We learn to hate people. Mm. And so I guess it's always been important to me to like showcase a community that's been so close to me growing up as well. Wow. I'm just, that's beautiful. Amazing. It's really beautiful. I, 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 we can't, I can't wait to see much more of your work because everything <laughs> you do is just like, it's, a, it's, it's take, it's helping us learn and educate and, and love. And, and I just think that's just beautiful. Oh, you know, you're you so a, a wonderful filmmaker. I can't wait to see much more of your work, Devin. So. I can't either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you guys. Thank I really you so much for having this. us. Thank, thank you. you for being here. Absolutely. Devin, Devin Thomas, thank you so thank much. Thank you.